Hello everybody, this is Richard Cespedes and I'm here with the 2000 subscribers special. And I'm here with the video to show how the brain, mind and body performs psychokinesis. This is all my theories and my opinions on how the brain forms it. Without further ado, let's go. Since I've been studying psychokinesis, I came up with a few theories describing how it works in the deepest but simplistic way. Now this is just my opinion from the research I've done. Psychokinesis works by having two layers of reality and fantasy fusing at once. Let me explain. The default reality of the stationary object that you see it, and a second transparent layer of the visual thought of the object moving as you see it in your mind. The second layer, similar to an overlay, is on top of the first layer as we see the object remaining stationary. Both layers fuse together to create an initiation of psychokinesis movement. The second layer of the visual intention to move the object must be slightly more dominant as to allow itself to take over the reality of the stationary object as we see it and make it move. Even then there has to be a perfect delicate balance of acknowledgement of both. This is what creates the fusion and initiates telekinesis. It's just like a projector that we had in school. If you have two clear layers of plastic you can have an outline drawing of an apple that's blue and one that's red. You can put one on top of the other to get a mix of both and get a purple outline apple and that's what shows up on the projection on the wall. That's where the fusion occurs for psychokinesis. Your internal imagination fusing with your external reality to bring telekinesis to life. This is the description that I made to describe how it works for me. I believe this is universal. One more thing I wanted to add, go deeper into this was that I believe that the cerebral cortex, the occipital lobe, and the parietal might be three big factors in telekinesis. <clears throat> now, I want to show you some images of the real human brain before I go on. This is very graphic images of a person holding a brain. So if you can't handle it, you might as well stop the video. And without further ado, let's go. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to look some video clips. And on these video clips, um, it's going to show areas of the parts of the brain that initiates psychokinesis, which I believe initiates psychokinesis. Uh, first, we're gonna look at the cerebral cortex. Right there in the square area is approximately where the cerebral cortex is. It's a small little section area. It goes from the left and right um, um, hemispheres. It goes down. Um, this is where you create uh, physical action, um, sensory um, perception. Um, this is even where like consciousness, scientists say consciousness is, so it's a very crucial area. Um, it has to do with a lot of with memory, which is really good with retaining information, carrying your, uh, when you do psychokinesis, you want to carry your successes, retaining the information with you. And so what it is, is that uh, not only does it create action, um, physical action with the parietal lobe, but it creates intention before action. And this intention moment, interfused with the other parts of the brain, as I'm going to explain now, is what creates a, a fusion of psychokinesis motion, along with imagination. We're going to continue on to the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe right there in the red area right there, right in the back of the, the head, is where um, you're able to see your reality. Um, this is where you create um, the crucial aspects of creative imagination, and focusing, zoning in on objects, with along with the, the parietal lobe, which is just above the area that you just saw. It's, 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 it's in between the cerebral and the occipital, where the parietal uh, lobe is. And uh, with uh, the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe, you create imagination with it. Um, you're, you're able to see reality with it, and 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 interfused with the uh, with the cerebral cortex with intention, the intention of moving uh, moving an object by seeing your target and moving wanting to move your target object through your imagination and your visual context. Like I said, your external reality. Fusing with internal imagination, which is um, automatically melded and fused with intention, is what creates TK fusion. And that's the occipital lobe. So right here we have the parietal lobe right here. The parietal lobe is, is, a, is, is a very specific thing because um, it's a thing between the cerebral cortex and the occipital lobe. And it's kind of like the secret ingredient for psychokinesis because it works with the, cere uh, the cerebral for motion and intention. And, and it also works with the occipital lobe for vision and imagination. So it's like the middleman that connects both places to create fusion. But you can initiate it by being in the right emotional state. Uh, right here, I'm sh uh, we're showing 
uh, the, a real human brain cut in half to show more detail in which areas uh, the parts of the brain I believe through my research is being involved in psychokinesis. The spirit is involved in psychokinesis, but we'll go into more. Um, the top part in the red is the cerebral cortex. To the right in the yellow, there is uh, the parietal lobe. And to the bottom of, of the parietal lobe in green, uh, there is the occipital lobe. Now these are the three, to, just to show more detail, these are the three parts of the brain that are involved in it. And the cerebellum right there is deeply interwoven with balance and everything like that. And the cerebral cortex is involved with, uh, with memory and uh, sensory and, and physical action and tension, which is a very intention is deeply involved TK. And um, these are just the main areas that are involved in psychokinesis. Well, there is other parts of the brain that are involved in uh, imagination. Um, there is the precumulus, the posterior parietal, the frontal parietal, occipital, and the dorsolateral prefrontal regions of the brain um, are also involved with imagination. And which gives a little bit more help with the intention and allows to move the object. I believe that's where the TK movement fusion occurs. From further research, I have also come to believe that the delta brain waves are also deeply involved with psychokinesis. Um, I'm not sure how uh, these regions of the brain go about initiating it, but I believe it may be either a subtle, direct or indirect activation. Um, I, I think that maybe you can have it kind of uh, activated before by doing some meditation and it kind of just turns on. But I think that it may be through the uh, intention or, and through the emotional aspect uh, and beforehand, of course, with the meditation, um, the delta brain waves can, be, um, can, uh, can activate and give you a little spike. It gives you more energy to move the object, to sense it out, this spiritual spike, I guess you could say. Um, but uh, the thing is, though, is that the delta brain waves are involved in our... It's a very important thing because it's involved in our sleep, in, in deep meditation, specific parts of deep meditation. And it's the last thing that science can measure before a person finally dies. When a person dies, um, the science, only thing science can measure is one spike or, or... I think it's like a spike or something like that of a delta brain wave before the body finally becomes deceased and everything completely shuts down. So if it's involved in, in main aspects of our lives in that way, then why shouldn't it be involved in psychokinesis, which I believe it is. But um, I've also seen uh, telekinesis minds possible, and uh, he used an EEG meter, and he proved that the delta brain waves were being involved in psychokinesis. So I'm very happy that my theory may be correct, because it's a dream world fantasy fusing with reality. <clears throat> the delta brain waves, I believe, is, acts like a glue and it binds and melds itself with the two layers as I spoke before of fantasy and reality and when it does this that's when the true psychokinesis initiation of motion occurs moving an object occurs and uh, it's just a big factor uh, it's just a big old interworking complex thing of how psychokinesis is it's simple but complex at the same time and I want to also talk about uh, um, the spirituality aspect of this that yes uh, chi energy and spirituality and spiritual energy um, um, it, it, it isn't just all the brain but it, it kind of is all the brain because uh, the brain is the is a spirit and the spirit is a brain it's one interlocking mechanism functioning mechanism now before I go I want to look at the pineal gland here's some videos of the pineal gland in the brain right there see it it's grabbing it I believe that the pineal gland is involved in spirituality and deep meditation but I think it's mostly involved in astral projection and things like that and going on on mental trips and all that. But in psychokinesis, I think that it may be involved kind of, but not so much. It's mostly other parts of the brain, the emotional states. As Rick says, but it is, thank you guys for watching this 2000 subscriber special.